Hello, so um, welcome back to our theology study. And I've been talking about uh, common grace. And uh, last time I d gave examples of God's common grace in the physical realm. And as promised, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, God's common grace in the intellectual realm. And humans have a capacity. The first thing we see about common, you know, if, if God didn't dispense his common grace, on all of humanity, where would humanity be intellectually? Uh, that's that's an important question, I think. And uh, humans, even unbelievers, have a capacity to know truth. Now they may not know all truth or completely understand the truth about God, but there is a human capacity to ascertain truth. That that's uh, that becomes a sign to us of common grace. And we can notice, you know, if we notice the Lord's description of the devil in John 8, 44, 844, uh, notice what Jesus says about the devil. The devil was a murderer from the beginning. He has never been truthful. He doesn't know what the truth is. Whenever he tells a lie, he's doing what comes naturally to him. He's a liar and the father of lies. So we, we see certain distinguishing facts, factors about the devil. Uh, he was a murderer, never been truthful, doesn't know what the truth is even, so he's clearly delusional, a uh, natural liar and the father of lies. Thus, the devil is fully given over to evil and the irrationality and the commitment to deception that accompanies radical evil. And what we, what we begin to realize is uh, if that happened to us, where would we be? He can't, the devil can't help but uh, kill and lie and destroy. And he is consequently delusional to the fullest extent, according to the scriptures. And, and the common grace that comes in there is that that can't be said of human beings. While there are human beings that kill, not all human beings are murderers, even non-believers. Not all non-believers are murderers. Um, not not all non-believers are delusional. Not all people are delusional. Not all people are unable to grasp the truth or tell the truth. So therein we see some distinguishing factor that can be identified as common grace. And, and while some may be given to deceit and prone to delusion, it's not their entire personification in humanity. And, and we see that and, and um, all people, if we look at, at the world and the history and society, all people are able to have some grasp of truth. And, and some even have great intellect and intelligence and, and understanding, uh, which, and they may not even be a believer. This must be seen as a result of God's common grace. John 1 9 says this, it's speaking of Jesus, so when he came into the world, it says, He was the true light. He enlightens every man coming into the world. And I use the literal translation version because I wanted to identify that word enlightens. And, and that's a fascinating topic that um, John very specifically suggests that Jesus enlightens every man, not just all men, but every man. And that is a distinguishing factor. Uh, so every person in the world is being enlightened by Jesus. And what we see is this is in his role as creator and sustainer of the universe and all of creation. And um, the Son of God allows enlightenment and understanding to come to all people in the world. That's common grace. That, and that's not an act of, that's not part of the role of redeemer. It's the role of creator that does that. And, and so um, we begin to see this, this tremendous sense of common grace that God is gracious to all in humanity and that he doesn't let the full impact of our sin or rebellion or rejection of him to weigh on us in the full level of delusion and insanity that's that's possible um, that might well that the devil lives in himself and one cannot imagine 
the insanity that would exist globally if not for the common grace of God. You couldn't go to the doctor. You couldn't trust a judge. You couldn't even go to the grocery store and expect anything to work out for you if it wasn't for God's common grace. And that, I think that's salient for us in, in that uh, we're in a day and age where so many people are uh, looking around them thinking the world's going crazy. And yet, with all the upheaval and all the silliness, and a part of it is the world's not as crazy as the news. The, the world might be going a little crazy and there's some bad things happening, but uh, the world's not as crazy as the media makes it sound. Um, and, and we need to come back to that, that there's a, there's a way of presenting what's going on that makes it seem like it's just everywhere and everything's falling apart. And uh, you can buy into that, but that's, that's probably partly from the father of lies too. Because the Bible says he keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And in other words, when our, when our minds are rooted in the Lord and we are trusting in God, we have a peace that passes all understanding. That's why in Philippians it says, make your requests made known with thanksgiving, uh, your, your supplication and thanksgiving, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds. And we need that peace from the Lord in times like this and not buy into the insanity that's always being presented. So as we continue on about the intellectual realm and how it's impacted by God's common grace, God's common grace in the, in the world of intellect is seen in that all people have a knowledge of God. And you may question that, but before you do, let's remember scripture indicates that that's true. And I want to read from Romans chapter 1 verses 19 through 22 says what can be known about God is clear to them because he has made it clear to them from the creation of the world God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly observed in what he made as a result people have no excuse they knew God but did not praise and thank him for being God. Instead their thoughts were pointless and their misguided minds were plunged into darkness. While claiming to be wise they became claiming to be wise they became fools. Thus there is this sense that we get in this passage of God's existence and often a hunger to know God that he allows to remain in people's hearts. And I think we can see that. And, and there are people who are desperately trying to reject it, but it's there nonetheless. And even though it often results in many different man-made religions, we see there is in man a knowledge of God. And, and that's the big philosophical issue for a lot of people is, you know, if there were no God, the idea of God wouldn't exist in the mind of man. And and that's a that is a that is a hold card hard cold hard reality that if we had evolved from nothingness, then what would be in our mind is nothingness, not the knowledge of God. Man didn't create God; God created man. Therefore, man thinks of him, and uh, that's that's what we begin to see. Man has a knowledge of God, and when you look throughout the the different cultures and societies uh, throughout history and antiquities. We find that man is always coming back to some knowledge of God, as distorted as it may be uh, in certain places. There is in man a knowledge that he retains. That's a common grace. And one of the great impacts for um, the missionary journeys of Paul was that when he was preaching, he could count on one thing. Man had a knowledge of God. Man believed in God and man had a spiritual mind. Once he got to that point, he could reach man by showing him who the true God is. And we see that in Acts 17 when he talks to them about the unknown God. And it's in him that we live and move and have our being. Um, <clears throat> there are people that are not walking with God and continuing in their sin that continue to have an understanding of God's existence. And we know that. We know some of those people. They, they aren't living for the Lord. They don't believe in God. But they, or they don't serve God. They don't submit to God. 
and yet they continue to believe that there is a God. That's common grace. And um, had you, the question would be this for you as a Christian, had you not had the knowledge of God prior to salvation, where might you have ended up? And, and so we see common grace led to saving grace for many of us. Common grace in the intellectual realm also allows humans to grasp uh, truth and distinguish it from error. And that's just a natural thing, and thus humanity can grow in knowledge. Because of God's common grace, humanity can grow in knowledge. This knowledge can be used in the investigation of the universe, etc. And, and this means that all science and technology, and when we talk about, when people say all science, they, they often... Uh, limit their understanding of science to what's called natural sciences which I suppose many natural scientists would certainly like you to think that um, but there are there are four categories of science there's natural sciences there are um, social sciences there are um, like psychology counseling psychiatry etc there are um, logical sciences such as mathematics and um, Theology actually falls into the category of logical sciences. And then uh, there are applied sciences. And applied sciences are the realm of uh, medicine, technology, even the building of automobiles falls under the category of applied sciences. And so uh, it's not all just the you know, science teacher in the natural science lab and that's all there is to science. Science is a bigger topic. It just comes from a Latin word, scientia, which means uh, knowledge. And so I guess we could also say not all, and the Bible says that not all knowledge is knowledge. <laughs> or they talks about false knowledge. And, um, and in the, the uh, King James actually uses uh, science, it says makes the phrase science falsely named, which is... Uh, because the King James leaned on the Latin Vulgate a great deal. So uh, knowledge falsely named. And I think there's a great deal of that in our world today, the knowledge that's falsely named. But nonetheless, we can know truth and ascertain some realities that are the result of God's common grace. And um, that, so when we think about uh, all science and technology carried out by non-Christians, is a result of common grace and it certainly becomes a blessing to all of us and and it allow it allows them to make incredible discoveries and inventions and to develop the earth's resources and to produce and distribute those resources and to have the skill to do productive to be productive in all manner of work uh, every single one of us in all our different aspects of work and in our careers and jobs etc we're we're experiencing the blessings of uncommon grace that we can know things learn things and function in those capacities thus in a practical sense every time you go to the store every time you ride in a car or enter your house you are experiencing the results of the abundant common grace of god and so what a kindness indeed that not all humanity is turned over to a reprobate mind. That via common grace, man and civilization have been allowed to continue here on earth for thousands of years. God is truly kind to all men. So that's it for this week. And um, we're going to be looking at the moral realm next. Uh, God's common grace appearing in the moral realm, and I, I don't think people always consider the full impact of that. So I look forward to having that discussion. Lord bless you, and we'll see you next time.